After a disappointing 2020 season, the Red Sox arrived at spring training in Fort Myers, Florida, looking for a fresh start. Four more weeks, and then we're ready to go. Of the many moves made by Chief Baseball Officer Chaim Bloom during the offseason, perhaps the most impactful was rehiring manager Alex Cora. Good to be back, good to be back. It was fun to, to drive here to, to JetBlue Park the last few days. Uh, it's fun to be around the players, it's fun to be with the Boston Red Sox. It's fun to be back in baseball. On the first day of full squad workouts, Cora addressed the team and introduced a special guest. This is a game that obviously we love. We've been playing baseball since we were little kids, but we bond together, you know, we get together. The off the field stuff, learning who you are, talking to you guys about your family, uh, helping you guys to whatever you guys are going through, that's what matters. Everything should be important to you. You should be the best at whatever job that you want to do. That's the mindset. And you do you all you, you guys do that for the guy next to you. That's what team sports is about at any level. It's not about how you feel, it's how you act. And you want to act like a champion. You know, it's it's how you act. Act properly. This game doesn't last forever, guys. You gotta take pride in everything. Try to be the best in everything. Good luck. Trust me, I'll be watching every pitch. You know, it's gonna be a good season. With Dustin Pedroia's blessing, the club got to work, hoping to make it back to the postseason for the first time in three years. Bobby, how old are you? 26? Yeah. 28? Yeah. You're like you're like the, the you're like the, the el viejo de aquí. <laughs> I feel like we didn't have spring training last year, you know? So it's just good to get out here and shake everything off. Got him. Boy, Marlon! My goal is to have my best year yet. You know? That's pretty much it, to have my best year I've ever had. I just gotta get that sexy back where I'm like, you know what I mean? Like when I'm dancing with his I'm dancing with him. And then I dance like dance is a control dance. Yeah, it's like I dance with them, but then I like control it with my hip. Are you kind of you're a music guy, so are you kind of a DJ? Uh, DJ. More of a vibe curator. Ooh, dude, I was so excited to get mic'd up today. I mean, I don't really do anything different. Like it's just the normal day, but it makes me feel important. Okay, casual, no big deal, chilling. Nice. Hi, boy, getting over. But like I was saying, I was really excited to be mic'd up today. I haven't put some cologne on. It's not my normal thing, but I'll put some cologne on for this uni. Richie! Richie! How are you? I'm good, how are you, sir? You look good too. See how many calories I burn? Just need to know how many calories I need to eat to keep my figure. Did you get that? Wow, you get that? That was sick.
After six weeks of workouts and exhibition games, the team headed north to Boston to open the season. On opening day 2021, fans were back at Fenway for the first time in 18 months. For Red Sox outfielder Alex Verdugo, it was a moment he had been waiting for since arriving in Boston a year prior. This sleeve, leggings, and then these socks. Really good. No, it's not dramatic, it's just being prepared, dude. Batting second, the center fielder number 99. I'm going? Alex Verdugo. Come on, Baba. And there they are, your 2021 Boston Red Sox. Love your hat. Gracias. We got some fans out here. Can't go wrong with that. I wish we had more, I'm not gonna lie, but. I'll take with what we got. I got it! I got it! Though the first series of the season did not go well for the Red Sox, the team quickly turned things around. That one's driven to right field. Rosarena backing up, backing up. It's over his head! It's over his head! And the Red Sox are going to win the game! Boston wins! J.D. Martinez with a sizzling line drive that ate him up and right. And that celebration goes all the way down the third baseline. Christian Arroyo got off to a hot start at second base. Get that arm all loosened up. Thank you. Nice knuckleball, bro. I, I got it. Hey, it's your boys. Let's have some fun today, huh? Bullpen guys. Mic'd up, mic'd up on the microphone. Guys ready to go. Let's go, boys. Hey, yo. Got a guy? Got him out. Gonna throw it in. Gonna be a play at second. He is out. Guns got him, and that's the ball game. Red Sox have won it. They knock off the White Sox today, seven to four. That's your final score. With the team rolling, hitting coach Tim Hires continued to put in the work. Dever, Devers will be singing over here in a second. I know. What were you singing in the cages? I forget the Rihanna song. Rihanna. Rihanna. Is that your favorite? No, no, Bogey. Bogey. So how is it to be Rafael Devers? How I for, the, for the fans, how does it feel to be Rafael Devers? Great. Yeah. Great. great, I know. Every day. Every day. I Every great, day. Great, great, great. Every day you come in happy. You come into the cages and it's like singing, happy, happy, happy. happy. I guess when you hit bombs like you hit it, hey, it makes I, it easy. I, I, I don't know. I know why I be mad. They pay me to do I, I, I play baseball. And you hit homers. And I hit homers. <laughs> you know, so I'm feeling out. I'm going too much, right? You know what I'm yeah. doing? Because if I come up, it's going to... You're gonna unstable. It's going to come up, right? Yes. And I feel good doing here, so that's why my leg kick... I feel it should be a little lower now, because it's really good. Because then that, that helps you maintain stability. Yes. Yes. Turns on that one in a high, deep drive to left field. And that ball is way out. As he strikes for number three, and the Red Sox grab the early lead, two to one. In 
In June, the Red Sox held a special pregame ceremony to honor recently retired three-time World Series champion Dustin Pedroia. Been here a long time, you know, and the relationships that I build and the people, the ownership, um, it's family to me. And all the stuff that they, they've given me and, and, you know, throughout my baseball playing career, it means the world to me. My whole career, I, I kind of had blinders on. I, I worried about each day and I never looked back and thought about what I did, what impact I had. But to see that today when I walked out, it's special. I mean, I did something good, you know, and because uh, this place is home for me, it's it means everything. So tonight, we honor the man that gave us everything we ever asked for and more than we ever expected, Dustin Pedroia. Obviously, it didn't end the way I wanted it to. And to get through that, I relied on the people that have loved me my whole life. My wife, my parents, my three boys right here. Um, and I just want to thank, most importantly, the fans all over the world. You guys made me and my teammates show up to work every day and, and play with a passion and play to win and respect the game. And hopefully I was a small part of doing it the right way. And I just appreciate everybody and what they've done for me. Thank you guys so much. It was special. I mean, the whole, the whole night, you know, it couldn't, couldn't have gone any better. You know, I'll, I'll be in uniform again. I mean, I think everyone knows that. Um, it's just a matter of time. I mean, I want to raise my boys and, and make sure that I don't miss anything in their life. Um, you know, they deserve that. And then after that, it's go time. Though the team started to slide in July, first baseman Bobby Dahlbeck and catcher Kevin Ploiecki provided sparks. Here's a drive, but tied to the wall. Right, right on it. We're throwing. Yeah, let's do it. This is the first time I ever grew my hair out. So I've like, yeah, I've been waiting since the off season because I know I wanted to grow it out, but I didn't know what, like what I wanted to do with it. So I just held off on getting a haircut because I didn't even know what to ask for. And so I end up just having Darwinson translate for me, which is like not a good decision. I think he just wanted me to do the same haircut as him. I had no idea. The first thing he did was go zzz, right up the back. It freaked me out. I tightened up a little bit. I was like, oh no, it's gone. It's not, it's not quite a mullet, but it's almost a mullet. <laughs> like if I had, it's, it's hockey hair. Just give me a bucket, put a bucket on my head, I'll be good. <laughs> it's been a grind. Just lots of tough luck. I feel like, I feel like I was hitting the ball hard, like really early on and just nothing to show for it. Yeah, I just gotta keep hitting the ball hard instead of trying to trying to force things to happen. Because when you force things, it never. Whenever you try to force a hit and you get one, it's usually like an infield single. And you're still mad about it because you didn't hit it hard. So just gotta hit, touch the ball. Just gotta touch it, put it in play. One more. Plasterize, yeah. So we said. You know, my posture, when I'm not hitting right, I gotta, my posture gets like, I tilt. So we, we just created the word plasterized. So we gotta say plasterized. You gotta keep your posture right. When we get plasterized, and we get the foot down, and then we just go. That's it, plasterization right there. The story of the cart, well, it happened in Tampa last year, and Veritech was trying to get me to, you know, think of something fun for the boys, and something fun to do, so I was like, let's do like a little tunnel, guys run through it, little spirit fingers up top. It was okay, you know, and then we found this, he found this laundry cart in Tampa at the end of the dugout, and he's like, if the boys hit a homer today, push him down the tunnel through this, and literally no joke, Vasquez was such a bat, he hit a homer like two pitches later, and so I went over and grabbed it, and you know, he came in, he had no idea, and just said, hey, sit in this thing, and I pushed him through it. It's a lot more fun when you're, when you're winning games, and, and it's something you look forward to for, it's something stupid to look forward to, I guess you could say, you know? It's, it's uh, 
I think I think it's just taken off. Guys know more about it, and, and, and it's uh, it, you know we got our custom cart now. I'm just happy I at least got one ride on it. Honestly, you know, just just, just being able to do one ride. I give a lot, I've given out a lot of free rides. He yanks a bullet to left and out of the ballpark. A frozen rope for Kevin Plawecki. With fall fast approaching, the Sox found themselves fighting for a playoff spot. One of the few positives to come out of the last place 2020 season was that the Red Sox found themselves in an unfamiliar position at the draft, picking near the top. The draft is the single biggest opportunity in terms of a one, or in this case, a three-day opportunity to add talent and to add value to your organization. That's true whether you're picking first or 30th. That's especially true for us this year because of where we pick, but it is that every year. Our philosophy has always been to take the most talented player, uh, regardless of position or profile or where they're from. We're just trying to bring in as much value as we can to the organization, whether they're closer to being ready in a few years or it's going to be a longer process. We're worried about value over a sustained amount of time. Picking fourth, uh, our, uh, our decisions and, and um, just how we go about thinking, how we're ranking out those players, is, it's all simplified. We're worried about five, six, seven players, not 15, 20, 25 players. We'll be in, you know, over a week preparing and, and lining up the guys we like, how we like them. We'll go through different scenarios if, if it, you know, to try and see what would happen if this guy's there or this guy isn't there and just be prepared for all the scenarios. There are certain scenarios that in my head I'm more hopeful for than others. Uh, but it, there isn't just one way this has to go. With the fourth pick of the 2021 MLB Draft, the Boston Red Sox select Marcelo Meyer, a shortstop from East Lake High School in Chula Vista, California. One of the exciting things about getting someone like Marcelo is that he has a chance to really be the complete package. He really is a ceiling to be able to do everything on the field and impact the game in so many ways. Obviously, there's a long way from draft day for an 18-year-old to that ceiling. There's a, there's a lot of uh, twists and turns that the road can take, but he has that upside and that's really, really exciting. After falling in the standings to start the second half of the season, the team got a boost in August when ace Chris Sale returned from Tommy John surgery. Swing and a miss. He struck him out with the slider. Swing and a miss. He sets him down. And he struck him out. Caught him looking. 94 miles an hour. I'm very, very lucky. I'm very fortunate. Through all this, I've been able to realize that more. Um, you know, I've I had some bad days over the last couple of years, but they're not compared to a lot of people's bad days, man. And, and perspective has helped me out a lot. Um, you know, and, and I mean, hell, I was on top of the world. I threw the last pitch of the World Series, show up spring training, sign this huge freaking contract. And like that, gone. And I wasn't, clearly I wasn't expecting it. I didn't, no one expected it to happen, no one knew this was going to be the thing that happened, but um, I just I'm so freaking appreciative. I, I, I can't, I can't think of anything else. I just, you know, my guys sending me text messages, giving me phone calls, um, you know, my family. I'm, <laughs> I'm a tough guy to deal with on a good day. And I had a lot of bad days, so um, you know, for my family to stay behind me, you know, I, I became a better person out of the back end of this, I'd like to think. You know, today was what it was. I, you know, I gave up two runs over five innings. Was it good? It was good enough. Am I satisfied? I'll never be. But everything as a whole, like I said, I just, I'm, I'm so, so damn appreciative of it, of the people, of the experience, and, and just being able to talk to you guys after it start and not ask me about, you know, this, that, or the other. I'm just, I'm really appreciative. After earning a postseason berth on the final day of the 2021 regular season, 
The Red Sox matched up against their arch rivals, the New York Yankees, in the wild card game. To the winner, the Tampa Bay Rays, a team that won 100 games this year. For the loser tonight, their 2021 season comes to an end. Bogart sends a drive to center field and deep. Gardner turns around and watches it fly. Crowd went nuts, and uh, you, you feed off that energy. Oh. oh, high and deep out to right field. Judge back and watching, and it's gone. I don't think anybody preparing for this one, evaluating this one, or previewing this one in any capacity wow. thought that Garrett Cole was going to be gone after two plus and 50 pitches. But that's exactly what's happened tonight. Torres sends a fly ball out to right. Hunter Renfro's got it, and the Red Sox have a date with the Rays. In their ALDS matchup against the Rays, the Red Sox split the first two games in Tampa and returned home needing two wins to advance to the ALCS. In game three, nine innings would not be enough. We're gonna grind it out. We're gonna we're gonna be relentless. We're gonna do whatever it takes to win a ball game, and we're sitting here with, in a in a really good spot to to win a series against one of the best teams in the American League. The next night, the Red Sox made some more late inning magic. Hernandez. I'm glad I was able to get that pitch, and I was, I'm glad I was able to get the job done. And we have a team with a really, with a bunch of really, really good baseball players that know how to play the game. And here we are, surprising everybody but ourselves. This is day one. You guys believe in this group? Not too many people believe outside this freaking clubhouse. But here we are. Yeah, go to the next one. Once again, the Sox split the first two games on the road and won the first game at Fenway. But that's where the magic ran out. The Astros won the next three games to advance to the World Series. Fly ball in the left. That should do it. Astros win the pennant. The Red Sox season ended in Houston short of the team's ultimate goal but it was not without plenty to be proud of. The club exceeded so many expectations in 2021, but the focus is now on 2022. The objective is clear, to bring another World Series championship back to Boston.